So I just got back from an incredible 10 day workshop in Iceland, which was just absolutely, uh, it, it blew me away. It was such a good time. It went by so fast. The participants had a, a life changing experience, which means uh, all the world to me. And it was just, a, it, was, it was a great time and um, just everything worked out absolutely fantastic. And uh, I just got back uh, late last night after a gajillion flight delays and I've just been kind of reminiscing on the entire trip and met, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of great people that participated in the workshop creative relationships that I'll hopefully have for forever. And I feel like we all kind of really shared uh, something kind of special while we were there. So I really got to know the participants well. And one of the, the, the more common things that came out of this, uh, of this workshop, and I heard this from multiple different participants, is that when, when you go on these types of trips or these types of workshops, and it doesn't have to be a, a seven or 10 day workshop or a seven or 10 day trip, it could be just a, a one or two day trip. But when you come back from the these longer trips when you have a ton of photos that you captured how do you even begin to go through these photos to find the keepers you know what what do you look for how do you not spend the next months you know multiple months going through each one of these photos how do you figure out which are the best ones to start editing and ultimately share and I heard this from, from multiple different participants on the workshop, and I heard it uh, stated in multiple different ways. And I said, you know what? This would be a great opportunity because it's a very real life scenario because I've got a ton of photos here that I captured throughout the workshop. And I have no idea where to even begin. I loaded all these on just um, late last night. I really haven't reviewed many of them. And I normally don't shoot much at all whenever I'm teaching a workshop, mainly because the, the participants' photos are definitely what comes first. It's way more important than anything that I'm gonna be creating. So. I normally, on a seven or 10 day trip, I would probably have two or three times as many photos as I did. But nevertheless, I do have quite a few that uh, I'm hoping there will be some good stuff through here. So what I like to do, and, and this is basically all of the photos that I capture the beginning images right here. These are the uh, the images from the uh, the helicopter, or not helicopter, the uh, the airplane ride that I got to take over the uh, the braided rivers of Iceland, kind of capturing those. And as you can see, here's a lot of different. Um, I really like these, just the color contrast between the black sand beach and the the aqua of the water here. But what I like to look for is really three key elements. And I, what I find from my experience that. A great landscape photo usually will have two, if not all three of these elements. So when I'm kind of going through my images here, I really like to look for, you know, the first and foremost subject, you know, is there an interesting subject? Is there an interesting story with the images? Like as I kind of just scroll through these, these are, these are the braided river photos. These are kind of just abstract images, but these right here really kind of jump out at me, all of these right through here. And you know, there's the, the composition is very simple, but I really like how sim simplistic these are. It's really just all about the color in these photographs. So I'm always looking for a strong subject. And I think that's one of the three elements is a strong subject. So I really like these, you know, these vertical ones I like a lot here. And when I see something that I, I, I like, I just basically will open it up and just hit five. And that basically just sets the rating to five inside of Lightroom. I don't really mess around with you know, rating things one star, two star, three star, four star. I just basically rate it nothing or I rate it five stars. And so those are pretty interesting. These right here, the subjects is not super exciting. You know, now we're starting to get down here with some of these braided river images. And I just kind of scroll through these really quickly. I'm not going to spend a ton of time going over the braided river images because these are really abstracts. And I think this is a, a little bit of a different culling process than, you know, other types of images. But basically when I find something that uh, interests me, you know, interesting subject, like I really like this series right through here, I will just go ahead and flag some of these to kind of revisit. So let me go down to, let me just pass through some of these braided river shots. I took a ton of these, which was a very interesting exercise, shooting a medium format camera out the window of an airplane. Medium format cameras are not the fastest cameras in the world, but nevertheless, you put it on high speed burst and you kind of just spray and pray. But there, there's a lot of uh, interesting images through here. And I definitely think I'm gonna end up being able to pull out a couple, one, couple of images that I'm pretty happy with there. Now here is the, the one of the very first locations that I went to and I really love the overall subject of this image of this composition I should say I'll kind of zoom in right here just kind of go through some of these different um, uh, compositions that I ended up going for. There was areas in the foreground that were very close to the camera so I ended up having to focus stack these. That's why you see so many images that appear to look very similar but those are just kind of focus stacked images. And I'm just kind of going through the composition here and let me just go to the develop module. 
just going to throw these shadows all the way up so I can just see exactly what we're working with there a little easier. And I really do like this image. So it has the subject that I'm looking for. And the second element that I think is, is critical is, uh, is composition. So strong subject, which this definitely has, and a good composition. And I do really like the composition here. Pull the shadow so you can see it a little bit better. But I think this composition definitely works. Now where this image fails, let me go back to the library here, where all of these images fail, and I find that uh, when I say all, all of this particular composition, is that the light. So the three key elements that I look for when I'm kind of going through these photographs is a interesting subject, a solid composition, and good light. Now it doesn't have to have all three of those. Obviously, if you can create or have uh, be able to check off the box on all three of those key elements. That's definitely a good thing. But a lot of times, two of those will work just fine. This is one of the rare occurrences, I think, where you have a good subject, where you have a composition that I'm pretty happy with, but the light, there's really, there, there is a little bit of light through here, but the fact that the sky is, there's just nothing happening in it is a real deal breaker for me for this image, which is a shame because I absolutely love that one. But here are some other ones, just real quick handheld shots. We were just kind of driving out of that location and uh, the, the sky was really looking good and kind of dramatic. These are kind of blown out right here. But I was just kind of running around trying to find some kind of interesting foreground to put in front of this incredible sky that was kind of popping off behind me. And these images right here look a little bit better, I think. So, you know, once again, there is good light. There, the sub or the the subject I think is okay. Maybe the composition is lacking, so I don't know if I would really revisit any of those right now. Maybe some of these could potentially be saved with an interesting crop. But if I go down here to the uh, the black sand beach, these are these are interesting here. I did see one that I really liked earlier. Um, these are kind of. I don't know, there's something, there was something about the simplicity of this that I really liked. You know, once again, it does have a strong subject, I think. It does have good light. And when I say light, it doesn't always have to be, you know, direct light because um, the, the weather on this entire workshop, it was kind of hit and miss. It was a lot of rain. I mean, typical Iceland weather. But there wasn't a lot of these images that had good direct light. Some. But this one had good color in the sky, which I really think looks good. So I think some of these might work well, and I fairly like any of them. I just hit five stars but there was one i saw where is it these right here i kind of like this series here because i love the photographer right here let me just kind of let the let me go to develop module so you'll be able to see it easier so the photographer here let me zoom out some i love him right there i love the the basalt columns in the background i love the color in the sky there's some layers i really like the, this overall image here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go through and just kind of five star this one and kind of keep on going through you know once again some some decent light some uh the subject is is good the composition is a little weak there so i'm not super excited about that one either but uh, i definitely like the one with the photographer and then these are just real quick handheld shots you know there was just great great color in the sky great church it's iconic with iceland i don't like all of this in the foreground here so i'll probably will never do anything with any of those but it was just something that i i captured really quickly and then of course this right here classic iceland shot just kind of going through here playing with different shutter speeds the different clouds moving in every once in a while you get a little bit of a uh, light on the peak up here not in this one but right there you're starting to get some but i don't I don't particularly love the composition there. The subject is strong, the light is okay, the composition is kind of lacking. So that one doesn't excite me too much. It's just, I shouldn't say the composition is lacking. It's just kind of, it's a little obvious. And I there was one that I captured right at the very end. So I like this whole series right through here and I'll kind of scroll through these. I love the, the texture in the water right through here. I like the position of the clouds. There are some is some drama there get a little bit of mist kicking up here. So I'll probably five star a lot of these, just really quickly, just hitting five star. I like that whole entire series. And I like this right here too. Once again, I think a very interesting subject. Um, okay light, the composition is, I think is good. I think it definitely works. I'll five star these as well. Now I'm going through this really quickly because my ultimate goal is that when I'm done with this exercise, which honestly probably won't take more than 10 minutes once I go through everything, I want to be able to sort all these by five stars. And I want to be able to say, 
quickly, out of my entire trip mark, I think I'm gonna come away with eight solid images. I don't know exactly which of those images I'm going to be able to, or I'm going to edit, fully edit, but I'll be able to say that I feel confident that I'm gonna have at least eight keepers. And that's always kind of my goal is I want to know as fast as I can how many kind of, uh, you know, portfolio style for photographs I'm going to be able to get out of this trip. You know, here's just a quick handheld shot of the, of the classic black church. And, you know, none of these are super, super exciting. I really liked visiting the, the, the Iceberg Lagoon through here. You know, some of these I think uh, could potentially, this is Diamond Beach. Nothing there that I'm really excited about. There was another one though that I did see earlier. This right here, I think these, there's definitely something here, I think. I'm just gonna five star these. And I'm just basically just hitting the right arrow and just hitting the five star key, or the, the five key to add that rating to those. And I really like these too. This was just a basic, a, a really, really moody day, a very interesting mountain peak. And every once in a while, the uh, the peak of this mountaintop would, would show itself. So once again, I think it's a, a very interesting subject. I think that the, uh, the lighting is kind of uh, not very good at all, but the conditions are okay. And I like the composition. I like how it's just kind of sweeping up here around, drawing your eye to the peak. Now the question is, did I get any? These are kind of okay too. I kind of like this one right here of the, the van traveling through here, but I think it's kind of overexposed a little bit. So, but if you kind of bring it down some, you might be able to pull something out of there as well. So I'll probably five star that one. But there, I know there was one, because I saw on the back of my camera where you could kind of see the peak coming through. And I think this might've been it here. So I'll go ahead and five star that as well. And I'll just kind of go through this entire process. This is another uh, interesting church that I found or that we, we took the workshop to. I love this little mushroom right here. I thought that was great foreground interest to kind of draw the viewer's eye up into this area right through here. So there's definitely something in, in these images here, but always looking for that interesting subject, interesting light and interesting composition. And what I found is usually if you can get two out of those three, then those are the ones that are gonna be worth five starring and kind of revisiting and you can narrow it down from there. These are some interesting uh, mountains with some really dramatic clouds moving through and icebergs. I really like this right here. I had this in my mind to create a, a square crop. This is as far as I could zoom in on this one, but zooming in a lot, this is where the uh, 100 megapixel sensor on the, the Fuji GFX 100S comes in handy. Something like that is what I had in mind. So I'm gonna five star this as well for these, more just abstract work. We're just kind of looking through these, you know, I. For the, this kind of series here, I wanted to put this in the foreground, but now I'm just not really sure if, uh, it doesn't excite me a whole lot. You know, I, I took a ton of images like this and you know, the clouds moving through, but there was some towards the end here, like that's got some really nice light on it right there. And then it zoomed in a little bit more. Now I kind of like this series here. And these are all just real quick handheld shots because the conditions were changing so much. The light was coming through in all you know different areas of the overall composition. But here you can start to see that light really starts to come through. And I kind of like this series here. So I'm gonna five star that, five star that. Interesting subject, good light. Composition is okay. It's nothing super dynamic, but I do like the layers of it. So I'm gonna five star that as well. And I'm going through this really quickly, just because I don't want this video to drag on forever, but this is a really good example of just looking for particularly good waves. You know, I'm just kind of looking for a wave that kind of filled in this area up through here. Uh, oh, I hopefully I got one of them. Let's see. This one looks pretty good here. Got a little bit of distortion right here. I, basically, I had my, my 24, 23 millimeter prime kind of angled down because I wanted to stretch those C stacks, use the natural distortion of the lens. But this C stack was too far to the right of the frame and kind of distorted it a little bit. I will be able to bring it back using the, the warp function or, or some type of transform function in either Lightroom or Photoshop. So I will be able to, to save that. And and then right here, just a long lens, you know, there's another classic, iconic Iceland shot. There was a ton of people at this location, which is very uh, common for this spot. So I wanted to try and do something a little bit more unique. So I put on my longest lens with a super fast shutter speed and just zoomed into the, the crashing water here. Just I thought that that looked really good and there was rainbows that appeared. So I was just zooming into those areas right through there. And I really like all of these just to kind of get a more intimate shot 
of this area right through here. And I would just kind of just keep going through here, just finding the ones that I, I like the most. And there's something I like that. Five star that. I think that looks good here. I love this area right through here, crashing down. And then, you know, more rainbow shots. This is just a real quick handheld shot of this location. Another one right here. What's crazy is if you zoom in, you can see people walking through here. This adds a lot of scale to this one. So I'm gonna five star that one as well. And then these are from the, the volcano eruption. There's not a lot of compositional changes here. There wasn't a whole lot for me to do. I was quite a bit, uh, a fair distance away from this location. And I was just kind of just basically just trying to get the lava flow moving through the overall image. But I would just kind of go through those real quick. So many of these are the same and just kind of five star whichever ones that I want to, to edit there. Some more abstract images. This is from the actual drone of uh, inside of the crater. This is a couple days later after the, the volcano had died down. You can see there's really no uh, lava or anything inside of it. So it was dormant at that time. And then once again, got a ton of those actually. This was uh, interesting, just basically taking the drone and just looking for just areas, some more abstracts. I love like this right through here of this lava, you know, new earth meeting old earth. I think that's kind of cool. I'm going to five star that. And I think these are really neat as well. You know, once again, just, just five star some of these. And I got a bunch of those just kind of going through this real quickly. These are kind of neat. But nevertheless, once I get everything completed and I go through all of them, I'm just going to hit enable filters, go back to library, and I'm going to set this to filter by rating five star and higher. And basically it's going to leave me with this. So, and I'm going to be able to tell myself, so one of these is going to work. One of these is going to work. Should be able to get one out of here. That's three total. Maybe one of those will work. So that could be a fourth. One of these images will work. That'll be five, six, seven. Hopefully one of those will work. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, four. So, you know, at the surface level, I could possibly come away with maybe 15 images that I'm really, really excited about. I'm sure once I dig in a little bit further, some of these I'll probably just cross off the list. So maybe between 10 and 12 of these images I will come away with uh, that I'm really excited about, which honestly for teaching a workshop and not being 100% focused on my own photography, that's pretty good. That's a good keeper rate. So that makes me feel good. I think we all, when we go on these trips, we wanna be as productive as possible and come away with images that we're pretty excited about. So I do hope that that helps somebody out there who is uh, possibly struggling with how to really narrow down the images that uh, they captured from a trip because once again you know we're all we're not all of us but we're all, the majority of us are probably shooting digital and we come away with a ton of photographs and it can be a little bit overwhelming at times to figure out you know where to start the editing process so i do hope my kind of process might help someone out there just looking for the at least two of the three critical elements for uh, that that i look for composition light and a strong subject so I think that that is something that uh, has definitely helped me from my, my calling process and hopefully it will help you as well. If you have any questions about this week's video, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll definitely get back in touch with you. And as always, I really do appreciate you watching this week's video and I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye.